Hello everyone, how's it going? Vasco here from the Angular University. Maybe one of the biggest obstacles to Angular 2 adoption are corporate proxies and even getting it to run in your Windows corporate PC. It's really much harder than one might think while running it from home, for example. So the goal of this video is to get some tips and tricks on how to get this set up in your organization and maybe show that prototype to your boss that will convince him to adopt Angular 2 in your team. So let's get started! This is a quick introduction to the Node.js ecosystem, so to Node and NPM. It's meant for developers that are just arriving maybe at the Angular 2 ecosystem and uh, they're trying to figure out Node, NPM and how to use these tools. What we're going to do here is we're going to go over how to install Node, how to switch easily between Node versions, how to install Node without administration rights on your PC and we're going to see also how to deal with corporate proxies and the usual obstacles that you will find if you try to use Node in a new project in a company where it has never been used before, either as a server or as more frequently a front-end build tool. So the first thing to do is to go to the website and install Node.js, you can download it here. Usually in Angular 2 projects we are using Node for front-end tooling, we are not necessarily running Node as the server, although we could, but there are many projects where Node is being used as a build tool and as a development time tool, essentially. So for those cases, it's better to download the latest version. So you want to download the latest version of Node, but easier said than done because this might be blocked at the level of the installation. It might need admin rights. So you don't need admin rights to install Node. If you head over to nodejs.org slash dist, you have here the list of installation versions that are available. And let's say that we want the latest version, so version 7 dot something. Here we have it, version 7.2.0. We click into it and we have here a series of downloadable executables. What we can do here is, for example, we can download the Windows version. Let's say that we want to download the version 7.2.0 for Windows. So if we open the package that we just downloaded it and we unzip it, we are going to see that the package contains a node.exe. So this is a Mac, but in Windows, you can put this in any folder in your computer and you need to add this directory here to your path so that once you type node in the command line, you would have node running in Windows. So you don't need administration rights to do this. You also have here npm and you have npm.cmd. So once you put this directory on the path, if you type node minus v, you should get a working version of node and npm minus v, you should get a working version of npm as well. Because take a look, npm.cmd means that npm will be recognized as a command in a Windows prompt. Once you have node installed, the next thing that you want to install is git. Even if your project is using subversion and will do so for the foreseeable future, it's still great to install git because it comes with a bash shell that does not need any administration rights to be installed. It's called git bash, so it's a terminal like the Windows terminal, but it runs bash, so you can use bash both on the server and on your computer if you want. And it's great for interacting with Git, with NPM. It's a great thing to have in general in your computer. So you head over to git-scm and you install Git in your computer. You will, you will eventually need it for other reasons. So might as well install it and have a good bash shell. It does not require administration rights. You have a checkbox that says I want Windows Explorer integration. So with that integration, you can right click on a folder and you can do commits on Git with it. But other, other than that, to install Git bash and Git itself, if you want to check that checkbox, you will be able to install Git bash without any problem in your Windows PC because those options do not require administration rights. Now, after having Git and Node and NPM installed in your computer, 
you should have a terminal where you type node minus v and you would have some ancient version of node maybe because it was already installed or it's a fresh install that you just downloaded and you have the latest version but in a month in two months you will need a new node version and you don't want to go over the process so i would advise you to install from the beginning a tool that easily allows you to download different versions of Node. This is great if you have multiple projects, each one depending on different versions of Node. So the tool that we can use, there are a couple of tools. There is a tool called NVM and there is a tool called Nave. So let's have a look at them here in the npmjs.org. We can see here that Nave has 2000 downloads in the last day. And let's have a look at NVM. So it has a lot less downloads and we can see here it has been moved, etc. So at this moment, I would advise you to use Nave. I've been using it for a long time. It works great. So in order to install Nave, you need to do npm install minus G Nave. And if you are in Mac or Linux, you will have to throw in a sudo at the beginning and the installation should run smoothly. It's a simple tool. If we do nave ls, this gives us, uh, take a look, these are all the node versions that I have here installed in this computer. So I have a lot of uh, node versions. So in this case, let me see what was the latest version of node. It's 7.2.0. So let's say, for example, I don't have here the latest version of node. So how do I install it using nave? I do ls remote and here it is it's available so you can also install if you need it you have versions of iojs this is the forked version before the merge let's then use nave to install the latest version of node you simply have to do nave use and then the version of node that you need so in this case nave use 7.2.0 it detects that it's not locally installed so it's just going to download it and here it's going to launch a new bash shell so this has executed a new shell you can exit from it to go back to the previous shell right now if you do node minus v you have here the latest version of node installed so this is a very convenient way for switching between node versions so if i now do nave ls i can see here that i have 7.2.0 Okay, so this is a good start. You have a bash shell, you have node, you have npm, but typically if you are in a corporate environment, if you type npm install at angular slash core, you're going to get a proxy error. So your corporate proxy will not allow you to install things from the command line. The first thing that you need to do is to head over to your browser and there, try to see if you have access to registry.npmjs.org. So you should try first with HTTPS, just to make sure that you can access it. Or if you can't, try with HTTP. Now, your corporate proxy might show you a pop-up saying, do you really want to access this site? So it's a confirmation pop-up that is trying to see if your Windows user that is being used to log into your corporate proxy if you really want to go to that site. You click OK and many times you can still watch the site. So it's just a preventive measure in corporate proxies. So if at this point you can access the registry one way or the other via your browser, then we're in business because this means that in a last case scenario, you could always use the credentials that your browser is using to connect itself to the proxy. You could use those same credentials typically associated to your Windows user to download your NPM packages as well. So if you can watch it in the browser, you can use those credentials to download things from NPM as well. If you cannot access npmjs.org, then it's better to request access to it to your uh, IT department. You will end up needing it anyway to search for packages, etc. And you might also end up using it to download node packages or not. But it's a good thing to do at this moment to ask access for it. So let's assume that you have access to npmjs.org. If you are having problems accessing the HTTPS version of 
npmjs.org and this has happened to me in the past you might have to basically turn it off so this is not recommended but there are situations where this is necessary and it's I'm afraid to say rather frequent so instead of using HTTPS uh, the registry you use HTTP so you don't want to do this on your build server this is no long-term solution the long-term solution is to check with your support team a way to be able to use HTTPS but if you are just introducing uh, Angular 2 to your organization and you want to do, I don't know, a quick prototype, you want to show something to your boss, uh, you want to have it installed and take care of the infrastructure issue later, you don't want to get blocked by this, this is a way to do it initially. It's not the recommended long-term solution, of course. So you can also set the npm config of your proxy so you can configure npm to point to your windows corporate proxy and you can try here to, you can get this from your internet explorer settings typically there are other ways to get your proxy credentials many times this will be your windows username and password sometimes it's different sometimes there's a common user that the team will use to uh, go over the proxy Anyway, you need to point npm to your proxy. You should also point the HTTPS proxy and take a look here again. Uh, someone is trying to turn off HTTPS by setting the HTTPS proxies to an HTTP. So unfortunately, this is a common situation that you might run into. You want to avoid to turn off HTTPS at all costs, but here is the information in case you need it. So npm config set proxy, HTTPS proxy. So let's summarize. We need to do npm config set proxy, point it to your proxy, config set HTTPS proxy. And if this is not sufficient, you need this also, at least temporarily. And it, you might also have to point the registry to HTTP instead of HTTPS. So again, there are security implications. So please be aware of them. And setting these settings in NPM might get you through the problem, but typically you will still have proxy problems at this point because the user is not your Windows user, etc. If this is still the case, if you're still having proxy problems, consider the following installing a proxy server, a small proxy process in your local machine that knows how to interact with the Windows proxy. So one such proxy, so this is just a small process that is running in your computer, is the CNTLM proxy. So this is a very small process that is very easy to configure. It's just downloadable as a zip file, so we don't need any admin permissions to install it. What you do is you have it running in your computer and you configure it to point to your Windows CNTLM proxy, which are proxies that are notoriously hard to get uh, around to be able to download things from the internet. So typically, if you can access npmjs.org from your web browser, you could in principle use the same credentials that you have, your Windows credentials, to be able to connect your command line tools like npm, like git, you can point them all to your cntlm proxy. So let's say that you configure your proxy to run on localhost uh, 1899. So it would be a matter of doing npm config set HTTP proxy to your development proxy. So you would have always a development proxy running on your computer and your tools interact with the development proxy and your development proxy forwards everything to your corporate proxy because not all the tools will be able to interact with all the corporate proxies but cntlm this would work if you can view npm in your browser you should be able to use any command line tool using this proxy. Another proxy, this one doesn't have a UI. If you want a proxy even for debugging other things in your computer, you might need an extra proxy. Sometimes it's not sufficient to have only 
the Chrome network tools to debug certain scenarios. You really want to have a debugging web proxy. This could be used even to debug other processes that are not running in the browser, like a web service that is doing another call to another web service. You might want to see what's going on over the wire. So you can install Fiddler from Telerik. This is a great tool also that can also be used as a development proxy and take a look. It does not need uh, administration rights. So this is another option. Install a development proxy, point all the tools to the development proxy and point the development proxy to your corporate proxy. Once you have a prototype running and you have a go to introduce NPM node as a tooling device in your organization, you can use Angular 2, you have a running prototype, you will eventually need a package manager. So this is later in the adoption stages. You will need an internal package manager to store packages that you want to reuse between projects. If you cannot get uh, NPM Enterprise approved in your organization, it's very inexpensive. Right? It's like uh, $20 a month or something. It's even less than that. Uh, but in last case, you have here uh, Synopia. So this is a fork of the NPM repository server that uh, basically it doesn't use the CouchDB database. This just uses the file system, but a lot of companies use it as an internal solution for uh, storing their NPM uh, packages. So ideally it would be better to get NPM Enterprise approved because it's the official repository and you, have, you would have your own NPM installed. Uh, I will open it here actually and here NPM Enterprise. So uh, this, is very, this is the official repository like NPM. Uh, it's really not expensive. I don't remember the price, but have a look at it. It's a great solution. And you can configure security rules like uh, we can only install Angular, this Angular JS, this version, because this other version might have a security issue that you want to make sure that nobody in your organization is using. You can configure those type of rules in this enterprise proxy repository. You can store NPM packages to share between projects. Uh, you can fork open source libraries and apply a patch and deploy it in your uh, applications while you are waiting for an official patch to be released. So it opens up a lot of flexibility and this will probably be eventually needed in your organization. So I would say NPMJS Enterprise is a good solution. It's a self-hosted solution. I think that there is a solution to host it also on their uh, servers, but that is not acceptable for most uh, organizations. So a middle ground is to have Synopia. Uh, several companies have been using it and it works fine as well. It uses the file system for storage. So it's important to keep in mind that. So I hope it helps. I invite you to hit the subscribe button to get notified of other videos like this. Have a look at the rest of my channel. I just released a video demoing the NGRX dev tools and the time traveling debugger. And there's a lot more stuff in there that you might want to have a look at. If you head over to angularuniversity.io, you will find my website where if you want, you can subscribe to my newsletter. So thank you very much for watching and talk to you next time.